Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about uh, prototyping, which is an important part of the UX process. Now we're going to discuss uh, what is prototyping, what are the different uh, methods and uh, why should you prototype, as well as my favorite design softwares in order to create prototypes in a fast and efficient way. So without further ado, let's get started. In this video, we'll dive deeper into an important concept which we previously discussed in one of our past videos, and that is prototyping. We'll also discuss the tools which I suggest to create prototypes in a fast and efficient way. Now, prototyping is an, is an essential stage of the design flow and you'll do it often in your design career. So let's get started and talking about the basics of prototyping. Now, let's start with uh, talking about what is a prototype. Now, a prototype is a primitive version of something that will potentially be iterated upon until it is a final product. Whether it's a mobile app, a website, or even the oven you use to cook your pizza, all of those things ideally will have gone through a prototyping process. You can think of prototypes as drafts, drafts that will be edited until published. It is through this process of iteration and development that products and services come to life. So is this sketch a prototype? It's not. Mockups sketches and wireframes are not prototypes uh, in and of itself. They're useful and should be used in conjunction with prototypes, but it's important to make a distinction. A prototype is used to understand and see how a product or application works, what it does and how you should interact with it. There are simulations of how a finished product will work. Sketches, wireframes and mockups serve other purposes in the design and prototyping process. Now, let's discuss what is the main goal of a prototype. So the goal of a product creator is to ensure that their product satisfies the user's needs. At the beginning of the design process, product teams form ideas that revolve around solving users' problems. Sometimes, Product teams skip right into developing a product without doing adequate user testing. When this happens, a waterfall design process is often followed and all significant resources go into developing the actual product. Following this process, designers sometimes use the ship early strategy where they release a product prior to user testing and validate it with real users in the market. Sadly, shortly after product release, many teams realize that their designs have no traction with real users. But how do you ensure that your team builds a product that people actually want? By prototyping your ideas. Prototyping allows product teams to explore and validate ideas before investing too many resources in building an actual product. Now let's briefly touch upon the concept of rapid prototyping since you're going to hear it a lot. The definition of a rapid prototyping is an analogy for proof of concept. It's a process of quickly creating the future state of a product, be it a website or an app, and validating it with a group of users, stakeholders, developers, and other designers. The rapid part of rapid prototyping implies this type of prototyping is quicker and cheaper than creating a full-blown version of your idea in code. The whole concept of rapid prototyping is based on the idea that by setting a direction for a design team and iterating rapidly, it's possible to get to a product that will present the maximum value for people who will use it. A prototype often starts small by designing a few core parts of a product, e.g. key user flows, and uh, grows in breadth and depth over multiple iterations as required areas are built out. The finalized version of a prototype is handed off for development, and uh, the process of, of rapid prototyping can be presented as a cycle with three stages. First one is prototyping, creating a solution that can be reviewed and tested. Second one is reviewing, which is giving your prototype to users or stakeholders and gathering feedback that helps you understand what's working well and what's not. 
And the third one is refining, which is based on feedback, identify areas that need to be refined or clarified. And the list of refinements will form a scope of work for your next design iteration. Now, there are different types of prototyping as uh, prototyping is not the monolith. And uh, there are various methods of prototyping which all serve a purpose within uh, UX design. Depending on the types of problems you're trying to solve, you most likely know which prototyping method to use. And uh, those methods, for the most part, are sketching, paper prototypes, low fidelity or high fidelity wireframes, HTML prototypes, and interactive prototypes. Now, there are many, many tools out there for creating prototypes. But some of my favorites are, apart from uh, the obvious uh, uh, free design tools of choice, which are Sketch, Adobe XD, and Figma. Um, I also really, really like using Envision, and it's one of those uh, pillar softwares in the design industry, which uh, you're going to uh, see many, many themes using Envision, especially for um, basic prototyping and uh, to show and present uh, the work. There's also some uh, really good uh, tools, uh, such as Framer, Flinto, and Principle. Each and every one of these uh, have uh, their own uh, strengths. Uh, so um, these are specific tools which uh, you might want to use in, in specific uh, occasions and uh, um, more on this in uh, a future course on uh, these uh, tools. Now let's talk about uh, fidelity because it's an important uh, concept when we're discussing prototyping. Prototypes don't necessarily look like final products. They, have, uh, they can have different fidelities. The fidelity of a prototype refers to how it conveys the look and feel of the final product, and uh, basically its level of detail and realism. Fidelity can vary in the areas of uh, visual design, interactivity, and content. And there are many types of, of prototypes, ranging anywhere between uh, these two extremes, high fidelity and low fidelity. Product teams uh, choose a prototype fidelity based on the goals of prototyping, completeness of design, and available resources. Now, when we're discussing high fidelity, also referred to as hi-fi prototypes, appear and function as similar as possible to the actual product that will ship. Teams usually create uh, high fidelity prototypes when they have a solid understanding of what they are going to build and they need uh, to either test it with real users or get final design approval from uh, stakeholders. Now, the basic characteristics of high fidelity prototyping include the visual design, so making it realistic and detailed design with all the interface elements, spacing and graphics uh, uh, so that they look uh, like uh, a real app or website. Also the content, the designers use uh, real or similar to real content. And the prototype includes most uh, or all of the content that will appear in the final design. From an interactivity standpoint, prototypes are highly realistic uh, in uh, their interaction as well. Now, the pros of high fidelity prototypes or that they can uh, help you with meaningful feedback during usability tests. In fact, high fidelity prototypes often look like real products to users. And this means that during usability testing sessions, test participants will be more likely to behave naturally as if they were interacting with the real product. Testability of a specific UI elements uh, or interactions also with high-fi uh, high interactivity, it's uh, possible to test graphical elements like affordance or specific interactions such as animated transitions and micro animations. And uh, there's also a easy buy-in from clients and stakeholders since uh, this type of prototype is also good for demonstrations to stakeholders gives clients and potential investors a clear idea of how a product is supposed to work. And uh, an excellent high fidelity prototype gets people excited about your design in ways a low-fi bare bones prototype can't. 
Now, when it comes to the, to the cons of high fidelity prototyping is that uh, the main one is that uh, there is a higher cost. So in comparison with low fidelity prototypes, creating high fidelity prototypes implies higher costs, both uh, financial and temporal. Now let's discuss low fidelity prototypes or lo-fi. Prototyping, uh, low fidelity prototyping is a quick uh, and easy way to translate high level design concepts into tangible and testable artifacts. Now, the first and most important role of low fi prototypes is to check and test the functionality rather than the visual appearance of the product. Here are the basic characteristics of low fidelity prototyping. When it comes to the content, only key elements of the content are included. When we're discussing the well, discussing the visual design, only some of the visual attributes of the final product are presented, such as the shapes of elements and you know basic visual hierarchy. From an, from an interactivity standpoint, the prototype can be simulated by a real human. During a testing session, a particular person who is familiar with design acts as a computer and manually changes the design states in real time. Interactivity can also be created from wireframes, also known as connected wireframes. This type of prototype is basically wireframes linked to each other inside an application like PowerPoint or Keynote or by using a special digital design uh, prototyping tool such as um, Envision, WXD, or um, all the other ones which uh, we discussed prior. When it comes to the pros, uh, the first one is that it's uh, uh, certainly collaborative since this type of prototyping stimulates uh, group work. And um, also another ad advantage is that it's inexpensive since um, the uh, this type of uh, of prototypes uh, are extremely low in cost. They're also fast to create, uh, and uh, it's possible to create a low-fi paper prototype in just five to ten minutes in most cases. Now, also clarifying, both teams and members, uh, both team members and the stakeholders will have a much clearer expectation about an upcoming project if they're presented with a low-fidelity prototype. Now, when, when we talk about the cons, it's uh, a certain uncertainty during the test, since uh, with a low-fi prototype, it might be unclear to test participants what is supposed to work and what isn't. Also, a low-fidelity prototype requires a lot of imagination from the user, limiting the outcome of user, user testing. Also, there's limited interactivity, since uh, it's possible to convey complex animations or um, it it's actually like not possible um, to do so if uh, you're using one of these prototypes since you cannot create uh, um, interactions and animations for the very most part. So in conclusion, if delivering a good user experience is the goal of your project, and it should be, then prototyping must be a part of your, your UX design process. It's crucial to choose the most effective method of prototyping, minimizing work and maximizing learning based on your product's needs. So the end result will be overall improved design that is based on prototype testing. So this is it when it comes to this lesson and uh, I'll see you in the next one.